It has been announced that Mega Evolutions are coming to Pokemon Go sometime in 2020. We will get our first taste of Megas in Pokemon Go. So of course people want to know just how good are these Mega Pokemon going to be? Like in PvP, in raids, gym defense, what Megas should we get excited for? Well, I already did videos on PvP, so if you want to check those out, link in the description to that. This specific video is going to be focusing on the Mega Evolutions use in raids. Now as far as how Mega Evolutions are going to work out in Pokemon Go, I have a video going over my uh, full thoughts on how this will be implemented. But a short TLDR for you guys is I feel like they won't be in combat transformations, I feel like they will be a separate evolution that happens outside of combat. I don't know if it'll be permanent or something that you can toggle on or off, but I have a very strong feeling that it's going to take place outside of combat and that Mega Evolutions are going to riff off of the same stat conversions that already happened from the main series games to Pokemon Go. I also have a feeling that the Mega Evolutions will keep the same moveset or have very similar movesets to their previous forms because I mean if you Mega Evolve Charizard into Mega Charizard X and it doesn't have Blast Burn, is it really Mega Charizard X at that point? And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Mega Evolutions for Raids. And to help guide this content along, I'm going to be using the DPS TDO calculator on GamePress. Now, some of you may already be aware that if you go to Customize and Mods, you can already add in the Mega Evolutions by checking this box and clicking Save. However, you will notice that the CP of my Mega Mewtwo's are different than yours. Yeah, even though GamePress did add in the translated stats from the main series games for Mega Evolutions, they didn't add in the 9% tax to Pokemon whose CP goes over 4,000. So you have to go in and manually edit the stats in order to do that. So the Mega Mewtwo eyes and the Mega... Mega Lucario doesn't go over 4,000, um, but the Mega Mewtwo's here, they go over 4,000 and I had to manually edit the stats to, to get that in. If you want to know how to do that yourself, uh, go to Species in the Customize tab, and then take their uh, stats here, if they go over 4,000 CP, of course, and then multiply that by 0 0.91, and then round up or down accordingly, and uh, that's how that's done. But of course, I already did all the work here, so you don't have to, and I can show off just how good these Mega Pokemon are going to be. And because we do raids by, you know, the raid boss type, getting that super effective damage in, I may as well just go over all the best types of Pokemon with Mega Pokemon added to the pool. So starting out with Psychics here, yeah, Mega Mewtwo Eye, definitely on top with the Psy Strike. Even if it just had Psychic, it would be on top. I mean, 5,687 CP. Uh, I don't think anything has higher CP than that, so obviously on top. Uh, what's kind of interesting here is Mega Alakazam is a shade behind Shadow Alakazam in terms of DPS. I mean, it is a bit tankier, but as far as DPS is concerned, Mega Alakazam is lagging a little bit behind the Shadow Alakazam here. Uh, so I think this just kind of highlights how much of a mistake Shadow Pokemon are in Pokemon Go, because, like, Mega Alakazam should be beaten out Shadow Alakazam, in my personal opinion, but it ain't. Then when it comes to the fighting type side of the force here, yeah, Mega Lucario on top with the counter and the aura sphere. I mean, what did you expect? Lucario was on top before, and uh, now it's now it's more on top, because it has Mega stats. Then when it comes to the best fire type Pokemon, we have Mega Blaziken and Mega Charizard Y, neck and neck, at the top here. But if you pay a little bit closer attention here, you can see that Mega Charizard Y does have higher TDO. TDO is total damage output, so it's like a more useful metric for tankiness. And uh, the overall metric for like a Pokemon's overall raid goodness is DPS to the third power times TDO. It's a little arbitrary, but it works for what it needs to do. And uh, Mega Charizard Y does beat out Mega Blaziken when it comes to DPS to the third power times TDO. So Mega Charizard Y is not out of the picture here. And then here you can see Mega Charizard X uh, is behind the shadows, including Shadow Charizard. It doesn't get that much in the attack department. A little bit more in the defense department, but not so much in the attack department. And it gets a cool dragon type. So Charizard, finally a dragon type. I guess that is enough for it to beat out Reshiram. Kind of interesting there, but the other fire type Pokemon, uh, not so much. Then when it comes to water type Pokemon, we have Primal Kyogre on top. Primal Kyogre, that's not a Mega Pokemon. Uh, the Primals are effectively Mega Pokemon. I mean, they were with the, uh, the Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire games. New Mega Evolutions were implemented there. They had Mega Rayquaza in that game. And then Groudon and Kyogre were Primal Reversions, which... Mega Evolution, right? So Mega Kyogre, on top. 
by a lot super supreme water type Pokemon and this is even without the uh, origin pulse happening so dang uh, kind of sad though Mega Swampert not as good as Shadow Swampert so Shadows come on man maybe Niantic will throw a little bit more to the Mega Pokemon than what I'm expecting because you can't have the Megas being worse than the Shadows right can Mega Evolutions be Shadows I don't know but what would that look like? If we can get a Shadow Mega Swampert, I guess that would beat out the Primal Kyogre. So watch out, Primal Kyogre. Unless, of course, we get Shadow Primal Kyogre. So, uh, yeah, Shadows shadows were a mistake. Then when it comes to Grass-type Pokemon, we have the Absolute Chad Mega Sceptile beating out the Shadow Venusaur, which unfortunately beats out Mega Venusaur. Yeah, and cool thing about Mega Sceptile too is that it gains a Dragon subtyping, so even better resistances uh, for taking on those Water-type Pokemon with your Grass-types here. Then when it comes to normal Pokemon, uh, um, yeah, all we really have is Mega Lapani, and uh, looks like it's worse than Shadow Porygon Z. Um, but if you go to DPS to the third power times DDO, you got Meloetta, who's not released in the game yet. It's a mythic Pokemon like Jirachi, Mew, that kind of idea. Um, but Mega Lapony, I guess, is the best uh, non mythic normal type. Then when it comes to flying type Pokemon, Shadow Moltres does command the skies over the Mega Rayquaza. I mean, Wing Attack, Sky Attack, those are like the two best flying type attacks in the game on a Pokemon with a really big attack stat, right? Uh, Mega Rayquaza has Air Slash and Aerial Ace, and I mean, Aerial Ace is pretty good for an attack that's not Sky Attack, right? But um, definitely doesn't measure up to the Shadow Moltres there. Um, a little bit more tanky, but when you consider the DPS of the third power times TDO, uh, yeah, Shadow Moltres is uh, commanding the skies. That is an elite TM right there, so do you really want to spend elite TM on Shadow Moltres for like the grass or bug type raid boss? Do those even exist? <laughs> um, yeah, so it does beat out normal Moltres, which is a pretty big win. Yeah, when it comes to ground types, we have Primal Groudon even beating out the Shadow Mega Swampert, something that Primal Kyogre couldn't even do. So Primal Groudon, tearing it up here. And then when it comes to countering Steel type Pokemon with ground type Pokemon, so like the main reason why you'd use Primal Groudon, uh, it is a sub fire type Pokemon now too, so it gets a resistance to steel type attacks rather than getting neutral damage from it, uh, making it even better for melting steel types. Uh, Mega Garchomp is just a shade behind, and I do expect us to get, you know, Megas before we get Primals, like Mega non-legendaries before we get Mega legendaries. Uh, so until Primal Groudon is released into the game to us, uh, you know, Mega Garchomp will be commanding it as far as being a ground type attacker. Uh, beating out even the unreleased Landorus Therian form, who is expected to be the best ground type attacker. Until, you know, Pokemon hecked up and announced the Mega Evolutions, which beat this guy out, so taste it, Landorus Therian form. Rock types, Rampardos. Then when it comes to dark type Pokemon, where is Mega Tyranitar? Yeah, Mega Tyranitar actually doesn't make it if you sort it by DPS, unfortunately. Uh, you know, both losing in the attack department and the moveset department. I mean, having Snarl, Foul Play, you know, bread and butter attacks here. And uh, Shadow Weavile maintains the best dark type DPS out of them all. And then when you consider tankiness, it's also beating out the Mega Absol. Not so much the Mega Houndoom, though. Uh, this is a little surprising too, but yeah, Mega Houndoom actually commands the Dark type Pokemon. If you sort by DPS to the third power times TDO, it ain't no Mega Tyranitar. Nah, it's Mega Houndoom. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that Mega Houndoom dodges that 4000 CP cutoff, so it doesn't get the nerf, unadulterated Mega Houndoom. Oh yeah, and then there's Mega Gyarados down here. Uh, he didn't show up for the water type, did he? Um, but yeah, no, Mega Gyarados actually gains a dark subtyping, which is pretty interesting uh, for PvP especially. Um, but yeah, no, all those cool dark type attacks like Bite and Crunch, it now gets a same type attack bonus on it. And not enough to make it one of the best dark type attackers, but it ain't no chump now. I mean, it's making front page. That's pretty cool. Beating out High Dragon, so... Take that, Hydreigon. Then when it comes to Ghost-type Pokemon, no surprises here. It's Mega Gengar. It's Gengar, but Mega. Who else is going to be the best Ghost-type Pokemon, right? And uh, actually really close to it, like neck and neck in terms of DPS and TDO, and DPS times to the third power TD 
Oh. Um, yeah, no, Mega Bannet is really close to it. Really close. So if you were to be up against a raid boss where, you know, the poison typing of Mega Gengar kind of holds it back a little bit, I could see Mega Bannet just outdoing it in those types of raids. And then if you're wondering, like, are these flimsy ghosts? Uh, well, they are flimsier than Giratina Origin form, that's for sure. But when it comes to DPS to the third power times TDO, so the overall goodness, uh, they do beat it out by quite a bit. So take that, Giratina Origin form. It's Mega season. Now this actually comes up a lot. A lot of people ask like how do we get DPS to the third power times TDO? It feels kind of arbitrary. And uh, yeah it is a little arbitrary. Um, when we were doing the calculations for it and by we I mean uh, bioweapon and then we just kind of like scratched our chins to see if we agreed with it or not. Um, the more precise value was like to the two point like eight something power but we decided to settle on three because that makes a little bit more sense, you know, as a number to like roll around in your mouth, uh, three instead of 2.8 something. And uh, it's effectively the same at the end of the day. So it's just a simple metric for overall goodness, like what you'd actually want to use in a raid uh, versus going for like a glass cannon or a tank, right? Then when it comes to poison types, we got Mega Beedrill. Yeah, Mega Beedrill actually shocked me with uh, how much attack it gained. And even though it only has 3,383 CP, it's beaten out all the mother poison type chumps. I mean, I guess they really didn't have a chance. None of them are clearing 3,000. And it has poison jab and sludge bomb, which are the bread and butter poison type attacks. But man, if you don't have a hundo B drill already, you might want to look out for one because, you know, Xerneas is going to be a raid one day in the future, pure fairy type Pokemon. And, uh, you know, having this pure poison type slammer slapping it could be pretty good. And then when it comes to bug type Pokemon, no surprises here, Mega Beedrill still commands the bug type Pokemon. Um, Mega Heracross, Mega Pinsir, Mega Caesar, they ain't doing it. Mega Caesar is even losing to like shadow Pokemon, which is kind of sad, so sorry Mega Caesar. Uh, Mega Heracross is pretty tanky. Mega Pinsir also gains a flying subtype, which could help out in some situations. Uh, but the master here, the daddy, is going to be Mega Beedrill once again. So, Hundo Beedrills could be pretty good. If you overlooked Beedrill Community Day, maybe you shouldn't have, and maybe you should get looking for some Beedrills. I mean, this guy's not going to use freaking uh, Drill Run, but so you could get any Beedrill now, even after Community Day. It's not too late, friends. It's not too late. Tragically, when it comes to Seal type Pokemon, Shadow Metagross actually beats out. Mega Metagross. I know, it's disgusting. And then because the attack gain is so high, even with the DPS to the third power times TDO, because, you know, Mega Metagross is tankier than Shadow Metagross, um, it's still behind it. So, I guess Shadow Metagross, man. Why did they do this? Like, we have all these tools out in the world, free to use. Anybody can use these. And somebody at Niantic was like, yes, the shadow bonus needs to be this insane. And they passed it, and this is where we're at. So, sorry Mega Metagross, maybe another time. Now, I did mention Xerneas as a raid boss in the future, like distant future. Uh, if you are curious, uh, best fairy type counters, according to this list at least. Uh, shadow Metagross does beat out the Mega Beedrill, but Mega Beedrill does beat out Mega Metagross. So, once again, Mega Beedrill eyes peeled on this thing. Then when it comes to electric type Pokemon, um, yeah, uh, shadows. Just all sorts of shadow Pokemon. And then there's Mega Manetric. And Mega Manetric is actually beating out Zekrom in terms of DPS. When it comes to, you know, tankiness, DPS to the third power times TDO, Zekrom does beat out Mega Manetric, but Mega Manetric is a pure electric type Pokemon. So depending on your target, it could be a little bit better. Like we all know Kyogre carries that blizzard, Zekrom doesn't want anything to do with Blizzard. Mega Manetric probably doesn't care so much about the Blizzard. And then, you know, I guess Shadow Magnezone resists it, so there's that. And if you want to know about Mega Ampharos, you will have to go to page 2 here. Then when it comes to Ice-type Pokemon, what is that? But Galar Darmanitan Zen Mode. Yeah, so that's the crazy flaming snowman that's currently not released in the game. We don't have any Zen Modes for Darmanitan yet, be it Galar or the original. Um, but once it comes out, yeah, it's going to be the top ice type attacker. I mean, I told you guys about that like a year ago now. Um, but yeah, no, DPS through the roof. 
But we don't know when we're going to get this. We do know that we're going to get our Megas in 2020. And uh, yeah, no, Shadow Weavile. And then normal Galar Darmanitan beating them out. Uh, sorry, Mega Glalie. I don't think anybody's ever considered using Glalie as like an ice type, like ever. Like maybe in Sylph Cups, but even then. And then Mega Glalie is still like disappointing. I mean, it's it's basically worse than Mammoth Line. I mean, same DPS, worse TDO, so... Really? Mega Glalie, you mega? Then when it comes to fairy type Pokemon, Mega Gardevoir actually has a higher attack stat than Shadow Gardevoir, so big stat gains there, even after the 9% nerf, so Mega Gardevoir looking pretty hot as a fairy type attacker. Dragon type raid bosses, watch out. Best dragon type attacker, to no one's surprise, is Mega Rayquaza. I mean, Dragon Tail Outrage is the bread and butter dragon type moveset. This guy has 5,000 55 CP after the 9% nerf. So yeah, no, commanding the world like a boss, Mega Rayquaza. This ain't no primal reversion. This is Mega Rayquaza. Now, if you're curious about Shadow Mega Salamence, uh, Salamence and Mega Salamence actually have very similar DPS. Uh, because of the drop in HP along with the heightened defense and how that works with the algorithm as far as spitting out this you know comprehensive dps and comprehensive tdo uh, the result of that is that there is a very slight drop in dps it's 0 0.042 i think yeah drop in dps that's not a lot so basically same dps probably higher dps in practice and much more tdo all of which is to say that Mega Salamence primarily makes defensive gains rather than offensive gains. So Shadow Mega Salamence would be at the same level as Shadow Salamence. Which means that no Shadow Pokemon can trifle with Mega Rayquaza as a Dragon type. So that covers the best Megas for raid content. I'd say if there's any Megas to definitely look out for overall, it'd have to be that Mega Mewtwo Eye, the Mega Lucario, because fighting types, super ubiquitous, and then that Mega Beedrill as well, because like, best bug, best poison, I, that's gotta be useful somewhere, right? If you got any questions on this content, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. If you enjoyed this content, you wanna see more like it, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my patron supporters. If you want to support the Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. No, I'm doing a thing. I don't want you to throw off my groove with the ranch rice cake. Okay? You wanted to try it.